Hi guys, welcome back to part four in this practical Rhino tutorial where we're making a tapered bezel set ring for a large rutilated quartz as an added extra bonus tagged onto the end of the video series. I thought I'd show you a way that we can add a simple four quarter gallery to cut away lightning holes into the front and back of the setting to reduce weight from the model and also improve its aesthetics. So let's get started. I'm first going to identify this quarter of the setting to work on. And we're going to use the dup edge command, which is short for duplicate edge. I'm going to choose the bottom edge, the intersection of the shank here, the bottom of the vertical setting wall, and this seam which we have, which divides the front of the setting in two. Enter. Now we need to offset these using the offset curve on surface command, which is this one here. Set the base surface, which is our setting. Make sure the arrows are pointing the right way. I want these to go to the right, which they are. So I press enter. And my distance was 1.5. So that's offset this line from that one by 1.5 millimeters along the distance of the surface. So I'm going to do the same with the bottom edge. The base surface, enter. That's 1.5 again. This line here, flip that direction. And finally, the top edge, and flip that direction too. And there we have a window initially traced out. Now if I turn the ring off, we can delete the initial edges that are duplicated. And selecting them all, I'm going to use the trim command with no extended cutting lines and no apparent sections to cut away the excess. And there we have a nice window, which when entered and joined, gives us one close curve and is a quarter of our window cut out. So the first stage to create the cutter, we're going to split away the surface within the boundary of this curve using the curve itself. So split, object to split is the whole ring. Enter, cutting object is our red curve. Enter, and now you can see that has separated this from the rest of the ring. So I'm now going to move this onto my red layer by right clicking change object layer. So we have that separated. And we're now going to click the surface, go to edit, copy. So it's saved into the RAM of the computer. Now I'm going to go edit, undo, edit, undo again. So we get back to the ring before I split it. We don't need this curve anymore. So we can click that and delete it. Then we're going to go edit, paste to bring that surface back in. So from here, we can start to create a three dimensional cutter. I'm going to turn the ring layer off, select the surface, and we're going to use the surface and offset surface command. And we're going to choose a distance of 1.5. So it cleanly cuts through the inside of the wall, which you know is about a millimeter. I'm going to leave it as solid. And we're going to go both sides, yes, and also delete input so we lose the surface in the process. So once I'm happy with all my settings, press enter. And you can see now we've generated a three dimensional cutter, which is normal or perpendicular to the direction of the uh, surface at the bottom of the bezel. Now, what we can do before we start mirroring and cutting holes, I'm just going to soften the corners here, just to improve the appearance and also make it a little bit easier for cleanup. So let's go to solid, fillet edge, fillet edge. And I think we'll use the same radius as we used on the shank edges, which was 0 0.6, enter. I'm going to do the four corners and press enter and again, and it rounds the corners off like so. Now I'm going to mirror this from the world center. Again, I've got orthographic on as I usually have to do it on the left. Now we select them both to do it on the top. So if I turn the ring back on, you can see we now have our four shaped cutters in place. And the last stage is to do a Boolean difference. We're subtracting from the ring as a whole, enter. We're subtracting with these four red blocks, enter. And there we have rounded corners windows cut straight away into the shanks. So if we put the quartz back in, we can see a lot more of the stone, we've relieved the light, and I think the design looks a lot more attractive. Well, thanks for watching the fourth and final bonus part in this video tutorial series. I do hope you found it useful. 
If there's one thing I'd like you to take away from the project as a whole, it's the importance of appraising the shape and proportions of the gemstones that you use in your work and create practical settings that function in the real world and not just on your screen. Also, be careful of using ideal diamond cut 3D models in the place of colored stones in your files. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer them. To see more content like this, please follow my page on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're considering inquiring about booking a bespoke online CAD lesson with me, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. See you next time.